opportunity and teach concepts. Uh, how do I do professional uh, development for my own teachers so that they deliver better inside the classroom? There are no, uh, uh, currently there are no uh, uh, rewards for best teaching practices in India. So how do they in, in, incorporate it? What are the modes and methods? There's only one way which is saying trainer of trainer, TOTs, and that's the kind of this one which is there. But what, what else we can do is another challenge from an academic and administrative support perspective. The third is, how do we make our student more, uh, motivated to come into this class. So the content which is delivered has to be interactive, should be assessed very clearly, has to be collaborative in nature. So how do we get this content? So that the students get an uh, engaged learning or motivated learning. So that, that's another challenge which, which it throws up when we're talking about STEM. Finally, you know, yes, how do we do assessments at the end of the day? If you're saying today with one science subject, we have a science teacher and there's a question paper given and then the science teacher uh, checks it and then gives the answer. But tomorrow, if it is multidisciplinary, students write the question, it has to go to a math teacher, go to a science teacher, a physics teacher, I don't know, chemistry teacher. So how do we, how do, we do an assessment on this? If this is the uh, kind of uh, curriculum which we are going to incorporate and implement it. So therefore, assessment processes have to be thought through and made it very cumulative so that the assessment becomes fairer and uh, much better compared to what we have today. The fourth end point is, does this kind of curriculum really connects to the relevant jobs? The problem is today we, we face that the guy who is joining an engineering uh, course in the first year, by the time he comes out of the fourth year, he doesn't know which industry because the industry is changing drastically. A newer challenge is coming up. What he has learned whether it is relevant at the end of the day is another challenge which, 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 which it needs to be addressed is, is what's it. So these are some of the challenges. I'm sure there are many more challenges which are there, but I've tried to see in, in 15 minutes which was given to me, so how much I could cover, so I could touch upon a few of these challenges. So if these are principles and challenges, there are some other challenges which are very interesting for me, so I put a, another slide to understand what are the other challenges, why, why I put it in a different slide. Across the globe, there are people are saying, are these four subjects enough to create innovation, to create newer ideas, to create people who can get jobs? No. Many of them are discouraging and saying, no, this is not enough. Why is art left out? Because when you talk about innovation, when you talk about uh, ideas, it, it, it's driven by arts. Arts education is important. Because that's where the creativity happens. That's where the innovation comes. That's where the ideas generate, is what people also believe. And saying, it's not only they need STEM as an education, but they need STEAM. They want to in introduce arts also as part of this education. So that's, the, that's where a lot of academicians are saying it's not enough only to have STEM, but, but we need to look at arts as, an, as, a, as, a, as a subject which should be part of this uh, curricula, is what they're saying. So very f interesting uh, thoughts on this. Uh, there's not enough time, so otherwise we don't have spoken about it. Then there are, there are challenges like changing environment, uh, global warming, it all leads into newer industries, newer challenges, uh, newer uh, solutions we need for those problems and things like that. So there are some of them which I've uh, put it across, but I'm sure there are many more uh, challenges which are going to come as we progress. And therefore, can this uh, new curriculum, so-called saying revolutionizing education system, education curricula, define this is, is another question which is coming up. So, so these are the other challenges which I thought, which is very different from an academic discipline, but very relevant when we are talking about an education curricula uh, like STEM. So, so having understood this, we, we, we were seeing at Pearson or uh, across uh, India what, what people are doing, whether they need to invest, what are the kind of new things we need. So I've kind of summarized into five areas which, which I think is, is very critical for, for companies, governments to invest in. The first one is very clearly investing in newer learning content and teaching strategies. I was reading somewhere, uh, very, very interesting note is in K-12, they say there is a lot of uh, uh, pedagogies and methodologies which are available, but there's no content available. So they, they know what to teach, but uh, they, know, they don't know what to teach, but they know how to teach it in the school environment. But when you come to a higher education, it reverses. They are saying there are not enough pedagogies available with the teachers, but there are enough content available. So they know, they know uh, how to teach it, but they don't have enough this one to teach it. That's, that's the area which, which, which segre segreements. So, so there should be a lot of investments 
if we have to bring in such a curriculum into Indian uh, education system, then we need to invest in newer learning content and teaching strategies, which is very critical, uh, so to say. The second point is, obviously, how do we train uh, all these faculties? And if you go and see so many teachers, so many faculties, so many professors, how do we enable all of them? How do we train all of them? How do we bring in a, a system to train? Uh, all those things is an, another thing which we need to, we need to find ways and means to do it. Yes, the third portion which says technology enabled this one can solve to some extent or can fully solve it is what the question is. So we need to look at newer ICT tools which could help us creating content, newer content, creating methodologies, implementing uh, these kind of solutions. So, so the, the third item is the tools which are required are very, very, very important, uh, so as to say. The fourth one is, you know, once we have all this, the assessment has to become much more this one. Everybody is today saying, was well, this kind of exam was rot method, just uh, you know, mug it up for about four or five papers, uh, old year papers, and then write a paper and get 80%, 90% is not enough. We need to find new methods uh, of assessing, uh, and so on and so forth, evaluating, and so on and so forth. So, so that is another area which, which, uh, which requires a lot of investments if you have to get into STEM education. And the last, but most of them I've seen in the last uh, three, four years, I've, I've been attending these conferences, talk about only four. And I think now it is a time where we, we need to do a look at how we do we connect this to industry. One of the interesting things which at Pearson we are doing, I am, I am heading the higher education vertical. Uh, at the third and fourth year, we are trying to bring in some of the corporate training programs into the fourth year program. Because we are talking to companies like Infosys, Wipros, and things like that, which I'm sure after they do a campus recruitment at the engineering colleges, what they do is they take the students back into their campuses, do a training of about six months to one year. We are saying, can we reduce that training period? Can you give some of that content which we can introduce in the third or fourth year so that the students are uh, ready for that in industry you know, to some extent? You know, that's the kind of this one we are, we are looking at and working towards. So these are some of the areas which, which we believe if we are to implement STEM as an education system, we need to invest on. Currently, I have not seen many of them uh, started doing investments in this, but, but I'm sure there are a lot of companies, including Pearson, who are trying to see how we can uh, you know, invest into these areas and then uh, bring about the change when, when, when the policymakers do the changes in the, in the curricula. So that is another thing. So, so having said these four or five things uh, in terms of uh, principles, challenges, and then the kind of uh, investment which is required, so, so what are the benefits? You know, obviously, everybody says, okay, if you do all this, what are the kind of benefits which you look at? For the benefit, I thought, uh, no, let me not uh, uh, explain to it. Let me run a vi YouTube video where great people are talking about it. Uh, so it's downloaded from the video. It is a two-minute video, uh, which, which kind of summarizes what, what, what crisply I was trying to explain. Just a second, there's some. It's connected. Do we have internet signals here? No, is it? I think there's some problems so, uh, there's no internet uh, connectivity here. So basically, it, this video talks, it's on YouTube, you can uh, check out the link, uh, which talks about a lot of people, uh, they're giving the benefits of this kind of education, why we need to implement it, and so on and so forth. So that summarizes uh, my presentation of, of 15 minutes, which I was saying to you. Thank you all for hearing me. Thanks so much.